Ian J. Capital. Today's video will be about ETFs. Should you buy them? Are they good investments? I'm not a financial advisor. If you're looking at the market and you want to look at the overview of what's going on in the market, you don't just look at a specific company. You don't just look at Apple and say, oh, Apple's up 5%. The market's up 5%. No. You look at an index. You look at NASDAQ. You look at Dow Jones. You look at S&P 500. That 500 in S&P 500 consists of 500 companies. ETFs essentially do the same thing. ETFs are made to track something else. If you have an S&P 500 ETF, that ETF is made to track the returns of the S&P 500. So it's going to be made up of a lot of the same companies that are in the S&P 500. Because ETFs are just... A group of companies and let's say this is a, a large cap ETF so what's it con gonna consist of it's gonna consist of large cap companies it's gonna be made up of large cap companies if it's a large cap ETF it could be anything it could be small cap stocks it could be large cap it could be metals it could, precious metals it could be like gold silver national bonds anything ETFs are seen as safer because it's diversified if you're all in one stock and it has a bad day you're stuck with that stock but if you're diversified where one stock has a bad day but the other stocks do well you may be profitable for the day even if you have a bad company in there or multiple companies that are doing bad ETFs they move like stocks they're liquid you can get in you can get out they're not like mutual funds where it's sometimes difficult to buy. One term you should know is the net asset value. That's the sum of all the assets. It could be stocks, it could be bonds, it could be cash, divided by the shares outstanding. Another thing to keep in mind with ETFs, if you're buying an ETF, is the expense ratio. Since it is passively managed, that's the fee you have to pay. There are low-cost ETFs. Anything above 2%, may be a little expensive. If you want to get in the market, you know, a piece of the pie, but you don't know what stock you want to buy, get an ETF. They're not like mutual funds where have a lot of fees. One of the fees that mutual funds have is the taxes because mutual funds are more actively managed. So they buy and sell within the year and they put that tax on you through fees. There's all kinds of ETFs. Whatever your flavor, you can get an ETF for that. You can also go inverse, which means you buy the, the opposite way. If you're bearish on NASDAQ, then you can buy the inverse of NASDAQ, meaning you want it to go down. So the value of the ETF will go up. There's also other ETFs that you need to keep in mind. The ETFs that have futures exposure. I did a video about contango and backwardation, where e the ETF actually tracks the futures and not the companies. One of the popular ETFs you may have seen before, you see it like this, 2x, 3x, the leveraged ETF. Now these are for trading only. You don't want to hold these long term at all because over time it's subject to volatility decay. The way they leverage is using derivatives. They use options, they use futures, forward swaps. And if it's 2x, they want 2x to return. Leveraged ETFs are subject to volatility decay. Over time, since it compounds, you're gonna see on the chart, it just goes down. It, they're not good long-term investments. These leveraged ETFs, they're for trading only. Don't buy and hold unless you have a strategy to go with it. Let's do a side-by-side. -side. You got SPY ETF, you start with $1,000 versus the SPY three-time leverage ETF, and you start with $1,000. The market had a good day. It went up 10%. 10% of 1000 your account's now at $1,100, which is cool. But SPY, the three-time leverage, had an even better day. That went up 10%, then this went up 30%. And now your account value over here is $1,300. Now we're talking. But the next day, Mark was like, nah, you're down 10%. So now your account over here, 10% of 1,100 is 110 bucks, so you're now at 990 bucks. Over here, you're down 30%. 30% 30 of 1,300 is 390. Value of this one, 
But the mark was like, we, we cured the virus up 10%. 10% now, your account's at 1089, which is cool. 30% from 910, 1183, which is cool, but it's not really that much more than uh, the 10% on the other side. The doctor said, psych. They said, we don't have the cure. Now your count, 108, $1,089 minus 108.9, 980. Point one. So after four days of a roller coaster ride, the value of your SPY ETF is 980.1. You lost 20 bucks. Over here, 828. You see the difference? Which one would you rather have? These up and down days really hurt. You better hope that for 10 straight days that SPY just shoots the moon. Because if it goes up and down, back and forth, this is what's going to happen. Okay, 828. And now you have to. It's an uphill battle just to get back to even. There's all types of ETFs, small cap, large cap, bonds, real estate, inverse ETFs, does the opposite. 2X, 3X, leverage ETF, anywho. E&J cap.